Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive, Daniel here. All right, today I'm going to do a video with some of my initial impressions on Vagrant Song. Uh, Vagrant Song is kind of a new hotness and my copy finally arrived. I pre-ordered it a long time ago and the company that I pre-ordered it from, uh, their initial shipment, they didn't get a lot and so they kind of had to wait until I think like a second printing or something, but the game finally arrived a couple of days ago. And I have played the first scenario twice now, so I don't know a lot about the game. I just kind of know the uh, the, the, the basic rules and kind of like uh, just what happens at the beginning of the game in this first scenario. So this is this really is an, an initial impressions video, and I will definitely be back with more impressions. Uh, hopefully, a, a kind of a full review as I play more. But um, my initial impressions are very positive. I'm having a lot of fun with this game and I want to play it more. It is kind of that perfect balance for me right now. And one of the things that I really appreciate about Vagrant Song is that it does a lot without a lot of components. It has a lot of uh, a lot of the tokens and a lot of the things in the game are multiple use depending on the scenario that they are in. So everything that you see set up right now on the table is basically everything in the box. A few cards over here, the board, some chits, and a few other things. But um, you can set up this entire game, everything that's in the box on one small uh, gaming table like I have. And that is really nice. I like that. You're not constantly going in and out of the box. You're not constantly having to change things and set things up. Uh, setup time and takedown time are super fast. Um, it's one of those games that I would, I, I would almost, I don't know if I would, but almost classify as effortless, effortlessly fun. It's a little more to get into than something uh, like, I would say like role player adventures, which is another game that I've recently classified as effortlessly fun but it's not that much more complicated. I think there's a there, there's a little bit more of a fiddly nature to this game than something like role player adventures, but um it's not quite it, it's not as complex, it's not as crunchy as a lot of modern games, especially a lot of like modern thematic games which just kind of seem to pile layers and layers and layers of systems that can just kind of get in the way of the fun. But Vagrant Song um is not like that. Let's go ahead and read the back of the box here and then talk a little bit in general about the game. Uh, this says, haven't had a night's rest since you don't know when. There's a whistling from a train coming around the bend. Out from the darkness, its haint blue light descends. Hop on board as it passes by. It'll be your bitter end. You train hop aboard this silver ferryman, chasing a dream or running from the past. What you find is a welcoming hand, white glove, stretched skin, and a fiddle player in the distance. Playing a tune that's awfully inviting makes you never want to leave. In Vagrant Song, a cooperative and story-driven ghost battler, you will take the role of a vagrant trapped on a supernatural ghost train, face off against haints, adjust your playstyle with skills and junk acquired along the way, and uncover the secrets of the Silver Ferryman in this spooky and challenging adventure. And there you get an example of how the game is set up. It is from uh, Weird Games, the makers of Malifaux, which I've never played Malifaux. But when I was going to, a few years ago, when I was going to try to get into some uh, tabletop skirmish games, Malifaux was one of the ones that I was thinking of. But uh, Vagar Song is a boss battler, kind of like a uh, you know, Kingdom Death Monster or maybe Wild Ascent or possibly Townsfolk Tussle. I have not played Townsfolk Tussle, so I know there's going to be somebody, uh, how would you compare it to Townsfolk Tussle? I don't know. Um, that game and this game were kind of came out or were offered up around the same time, I want to say. And for some reason, I gravitated more towards Vagrant Song. Actually, I think I know the exact reason why. And that is because of all of these right here. So Vagrant Song uses acrylic standees rather than minis. And I really like these a lot. I would still prefer it if they were cardboard, just because I'm just trying to limit the amount of plastic I am responsible for in the world. But I appreciate these a lot more than I do minis. 
And that does have to do with that kind of like box size and setup. The box is pretty small. It's pretty thin. It's a little bit bigger than a normal square size box, but it doesn't take up a ton of room. You don't have to worry about really storing these. I just put these in plastic bags. And um, yeah, they just save a lot of room. And these are really nice. Uh, some of them are sufficiently creepy, especially for being cartoony and just kind of 2D pieces of plastic. Uh, I really do like the look and feel of these. Very, very nice. And I know Townsfolk Tussle had a lot of minis. And so that was just something that, I, that I'm not really attracted to anymore. And really happy with these acrylic standees. Here are the rest of the vagrants. So the vagrants, these are the heroes. Um, this vagrant here, she comes with a little dog, little pup there. But the uh, different vagrants you can play as are the, so these are the ones I'm not playing as right now, the revivalist, the runaway with her dog, and the wayfarer. And the three that I am playing with right now are the songsmith, the curse bearer, and the empress. I have played this scenario with two vagrants and with three. I prefer it with two. I think two is kind of like my sweet spot. I wanted to try it with three to see if I enjoyed it. And I am enjoying it, but I liked it more with two. So each of the vagrants is going to have a uh, special innate skill that is on their vagrant card. They will have different values in some of these normal actions they can take, such as movement or rummaging, uh, searching for gear, uh, walloping the, uh, the, the, the hank that you're trying to, to bring humanity to, uh, searching and, and healing. And then there are also a number of skills. And each of the uh, vagrants can equip four different skills, two on the left side and two on the right side. And when you get new skills, they're going to have a little diamond shape on one of the sides of the card. And you have to match those up to the side of the character card. So that kind of tells you what kind of skill they are. There are a huge number of skills in the game. Uh, 85 different skills that you can unlock while you are playing. Some of them will have an icon at the top. And that tells you that... Uh, that skill belongs to a certain vagrant. So only that vagrant can use that skill. But some of the skills are also more general. So any vagrant can, um, can use the skill when there isn't an icon on it. And there are defensive skills, there are offensive skills, there are healing skills, um, all kinds of different skills, movement. And the skills also double as a kind of, um, kind of an advanced hit point system. Because as your um, vagrant loses their humanity, they will become wounded. And when they become wounded, you have to flip over one of their skills. And then you can't use that skill anymore until you heal it. So each one of these skills is basically a bank of the max number of humanity that the vagrant has. So this skill represents 10 humanity. When I lose all 10 humanity, I flip that over and then I would go back to 10. And then depending on how many skills I have, that's how many banks of 10 uh, hit points I have, basically. Once all four of your skills or however many skills you have, in this case, you start off with two. Once um, two of your skills have become wounded, then you flip your character over and you become like a ghost-like version of your character. And then there is a small deck of six different westward. So this is when you become a ghost, you are said to become westward. And as you get these, um, as you become a ghost, you will take your westward skill out. And then that is the skill that you can use until you generate enough hit points to become, or, or enough humanity to become a human vagrant again. Really, really cool system. I do like that quite a bit. And as you progress through the campaign, you can spend experience points to gain more skills. And the campaign kind of doles them out um, for you. It tells you which ones you, can, you are allowed to choose from. So basically what you're going to be doing in the game is you are going to be picking your vagrants and you are going to be battling against various um, haints, these old timey ghosts that are going to be haunting this uh, ghost train. In this instance, in the first uh, one, you are fighting the, uh, what are these guys called? The Turned Faces. 
I really like this. This is really creepy because, you know, they, whatever side you look at these guys on, you know, you can never catch their, you can never uh, face them. Uh, they're always walking away from you. And that really does play into the game. The game is quite thematic, I feel. The, the mechanisms and the theme are very closely intertwined and things make sense thematically that also happen uh, through the mechanisms. And I do really enjoy that. But you're going to play through this scenario book. The thing I like about this scenario is, and this kind, this um, rendition, this version of a story-based game is there isn't a ton of reading. You're not going to be stopping the game to read paragraphs and paragraphs of text. The most you're ever really going to have to read is something about this size there. And then throughout the game, while you are playing, you're, there are also going to be these event tokens that are going to appear on the board and you can move on to an event, an event token and then you can investigate it and you just turn to the paragraph that the event token represents. You read that paragraph. You often will have to do some kind of stat check or make a choice to progress through that event for the specific scenario. There are also some events called moments and those are more um, generally about the ongoing story. And so at certain times you will be told to read a moment and moments can unlock other things in the game. There's a light, a light legacy element to this game. Nothing is ripped up or torn or, or no stickers are placed, but uh, certain things do build up over time as you are playing the scenario. As for instance, you will have access to greater skills. You will have access to more um, items because there are tier one, tier two, tier three, and special items, special junk. And these are gonna be items that you can get that you can have access to. And you can, um, each of your vagrants can equip one item. And these are going to give you certain things throughout the game that you can use. I have not been able to unlock any of these yet because I have not played past the first scenario. But usually in between scenarios is when you can unlock a new item. Because in between each scenario, you are going to go through a camp phase. The camp phase you are going to read if you were victorious or if you were defeated. So there is kind of a fail forward mechanism in this game, um, which is something I do, I do appreciate. Then you're going to tear down, you're going to restore your humanity, and you're going to clean up the scenario. Then you are going to be able to spend your coins. Each of the vagrants that you take as a party into the scenario has three coins. And these coins are used during the game to select different actions that you want to take. You can take your generic actions. You can take your skill actions. Some skills will, will allow you to spend more of your action points on that one skill to make it a more powerful version of the skill. That is really cool. And um, But afterwards, after the scenario is done, you um, gather up all of your tokens from all of the um, adventurers or all of the vagrants that were playing, then those become experience points that you can uh, spend to unlock things going forward. Additionally, each of the scenarios is going to have three rituals that you can, um, these are kind of like side quests. You don't have to use these. You don't have to um, solve each one of these rituals. But if you do, uh, usually something good happens. Usually you will have a better chance of uh, defeating the haint. You will, uh, usually you will unlock uh, experience points or coins to be used during the camp uh, phase. And again, there are a huge number of different rituals that you are going to have to be, um, these little side quests that you can be doing while you are playing the game. And there's also this deck of cadence cards that seem to kind of augment or modify the haints. And I'm not exactly sure what these are used for. Uh, the game says you will use these when the time comes. But these little ritual cards that add a little bit of a, of just kind of a different thing to do while you are playing are, are, are really cool. I like that idea a lot as well. But once you build up your coins, once you build your pool of coins, then as a group, you have to choose to see what you have to choose uh, on what items you will be spending your coins. You can unlock skills, you can heal wounds. So wounds don't automatically heal. If you get wounded, you might be taking a wound into the next scenario. What's really bad though, is if you become a ghost and you are wounded, 
you have to put your um, your westward skill on top of a wound. And then if you if the scenario ends and you are still in a ghost form, you permanently lose one of those skills. It goes back into the game skill deck. So when a vagrant becomes wounded, it is imperative. It is it is essential that the group works together to restore that vagrant's humanity to prevent the um, to prevent them from becoming wounded and losing a skill and going into the next scenario, you know, um, kind of under the gun, really. Um, you can rummage. You can go through the bindle. We'll talk about that in a minute. Your hobo bindle there. You can uh, draw new items. You can acquire items. You can uh, perform a seance. And a seance is something that you can spend experience points on that will give you a, a leg up on your next scenario. And then sometimes you will be told in between scenarios to do one of these story cards. And there are 20 story cards. And the story cards are going to have different choices that each of the different vagrants has to choose what they're going to do before you know what the, um, what the response is going to be. So really, really nice. Um, I enjoy those quite a bit. So a lot of the information for the game is in this bindle bag and how the different tokens in the bindle bag correspond to the different token layout in the scenario. As you are playing, you can rummage through the bindle bag. And there are going to be a number of different tokens that you can pull out, such as iron nails or candles, salt, a rabbit's foot, and apples. And each one of these is going to do certain things when the, they are drawn by one of the vagrants. It's an item that they can use. And when it is the Haint's turn, when it is the Ghost's turn, you're going to draw a token out of the bag. And then that is going to dictate what they do on their turn. And so each of the uh, different scenarios has different powers that the different um, Haint's are going to be using depending on the scenario. Really creative use of components. There are also these components here, these Haunt components. And there are black ones, there are gray ones, and there are uh, white ones. And each one of those is going to be a, a different thing depending on what scenario you are playing. There are these different terrain tokens, and some of the terrain tokens are double-sided, and some of the terrain tokens, depending on the scenario, will have different meaning. So they really did a really good job of just uh, of utilizing a small number of components in a very creative way. And that is something that I really appreciate. You know, each one of these event tokens could be any number of different uh, event cards possibly. And just having these correspond to a paragraph in a book I think is really creative. I like the idea of the rummage tokens of the bindle bag uh, being used for both good things for the different, uh, different items that the vagrants can get and for being the bad things that you draw for when it is the Haint's turn. And um, I'm really excited to progress through the campaign because this is something I want to see. I want to see how the different Haints interact because so far with this initial um, Haint here, its main goal is kind of to get to one side of the train and then come back in like a more angry form and then kind of trying to destroy the vagrants. And it's really interesting how you can manipulate them, how they are moving, how you want to try. You know, I'm trying to down here, way down here. There, a new event appeared during the game, this event number four. And I'm trying to figure out what that is. So like uh, my curse bearer, she's kind of like breaking off from the action to go and try to uh, get this event before the game is over because I'm almost ready to restore the... Um, Haints humanity. And so that's another interesting thing is um, the vagrants, they die when as they lose humanity, they die. The Haints, they've already lost all their humanity. They are already ghosts. And so in this game, you are trying to restore the humanity to save the ghosts. So it's it, it's kind of cool. It's it, it, it's the same you know mechanism as them losing hit points, but thematically you're trying to help them kind of get to the other side, kind of trying to help them, you know, let go and or, or maybe bring them back at, in, into a human form. And I do really like that. It, it's just it's um, it, it's a pleasant twist on 
a common trope in a game, and I, I really, uh, I really appreciate that. But uh, yeah, so far I am having a really, really good time with Vagrant Song. I wish I could show you more, but it is a game that I'm trying not to spoil a lot for myself, and so I. I don't want to show too much because I don't want to see things. I don't want to see all the skills. I don't want to see everything that's in this um, that's in this scenario book. But there is some really good art in here, I think. And um, I think the story so far is pretty cool. It does have some interesting elements going on. I think there are going to be some neat like twists and turns along the way. I know there are kind of like three different paths that the scenarios uh, branch off to. So there, I think there is some replay value. Here's a listing of all the scenarios. So there are quite a few scenarios and the scenario book isn't massive. So you know, you're not going to be spending like, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes reading. The focus is on the gameplay. The focus is on um, really fast action gameplay. The turns are quick, the rounds are quick. And um, yeah, everything is really snappy. It, it, it's a really interesting game. Lots of cool choices, lots of, of um, good strategy and tactical decisions to make. And you do need to think a little bit about your positioning. You need to uh, keep track of, you know, of, of what you think the hate might do on its next turn, because as it is drawing tokens from the bag, they are put on a cycle track here. So you, you can count tokens a little bit to kind of get a better idea of what they're going to do and, and how you will manipulate the movement across the train cars on the board. But yeah, so far, uh, kind of really rambling thoughts here, <laughs> thoughts here on Vagrant Song. Uh, but I did want to kind of like just capture this, um, this, this, this element right now of the game that I'm really enjoying. One thing... Uh, in in the the rule book is okay. It could really use an index. It could really use um, a reference sheet to look things up. There are a few vagaries. The main one is it the, in nowhere in the book does it tell you how to set up your bindle bag. Really gross oversight. Basically, you put all of your rummage tokens in the bag at the beginning of the game. And every once in a while, another cool thing is as you are playing, sometimes the game will tell you to put certain events in the bag. So the bag does change its composition over the course of a game. And when you draw one of these events, you will again turn to one of those event paragraphs. So again, another really creative use of a limited number of components. And that's kind of like, that's kind of like the theme of this review is, is the, the game uses its components wisely. It's not a huge sprawling mess, but it gives me the feeling of playing a big sprawling epic game. And so that is my, those are my initial thoughts on Vagrant Song. Sorry guys, well I hope you enjoyed this, this rambling uh, long form ramble thought thing on, on Vagrant Song. I don't really know what this is, but uh, we will talk to you later. Take it easy. Bye-bye.